From sunny Phoenix, Arizona, the Cop Block News Roundup would like to remind you that you can't spell sexual assault without T-S-A. Welcome to the Police Accountability Podcast. Brought to you by CopBlock.org. Cop Block is a decentralized project supported by a diverse group of individuals united by their shared goals of police accountability education of individual rights, and the sharing of effective tactics to utilize while filming police. A massive civil disobedience movement is planned in retaliation to the new aggressive TSA screening procedures. The day before Thanksgiving will showcase regular people nationwide displaying their disdain for the invasive body scans by opting out of the procedure in favor of a pat-down. While neither option is preferred, The opting out will bring even more attention to the atrocities by slowing down air travel on one of the busiest travel days of the year. Exercising your ability to avoid possible unneeded radiation dose will raise the cost for the TSA's security theater. The government does not listen to market signals such as the recent media blitz about the TSA, but the airline, tourism, and hotel industry can put pressure where it counts. The laws concerning sexual assault and sexual battery do not have a disclaimer exempting government employees. For more information, make sure you visit wewon'tfly.com. And remember, don't fly unless you have to. And if you do fly, make sure you opt out. A Milwaukee County judge sentenced Deputy U.S. Marshal Timothy Mosley to eight years in prison and four years of extended supervision after being convicted of false imprisonment and bondage. According to Fox 6, a South Milwaukee woman accused Mosley of handcuffing her to a bed and taking lewd pictures of her while she was passed out and naked. The 20-year-old victim told investigator Mosley drugged her, handcuffed her around the headrest, blindfolded her, and removed her clothing. Investigators say photos recovered from a computer show a sexual assault occurred. Three Phoenix, Arizona police officers and a former patrolman were recently indicted on fraud and theft charges. The officers, Swargamson, Contreras, Peck, and Lentz, allegedly accepted money paid to them for private security work they did not perform. There is an ongoing investigation concerning 25 other officers to see if there is evidence to charge them as well. With the nearly 30 suspected fraudsters, Phoenix Police is requesting the public not judge the other uninvolved police officers and assures residents that the 29 individuals is not a trend and merely a one-off incident. An Ohio Huron County Sheriff's deputy resigned this week after an outside investigator found he injured a man during an arrest. According to the Sandusky Register, Joseph LaRue could face criminal charges after an incident in which LaRue allegedly used excessive force during an arrest. He told the man to put his face on the dirt and then proceeded to field gold kick him. The news article also notes that his most recent salary was $20.30 an hour, far less than a professional field goal kicker. The Phoenix New Times reports that an Arizona police union and a number of officers are the subject of a new investigation. The groups are facing allegations of witness intimidation and obstruction stemming from an officer-involved shooting that resulted in the death of an unarmed suspect. The real story of the shooting was brought forth by the shooter's partner. It's unclear if the investigation will last long since the prosecutor investigating the allegations lost an election to an opponent who was heavily supported by the police union. According to the New York Post, rave drugs were all the rave when Officer Kifa Ottman was busted for allegedly trying to arrange a $40,000 purchase of Special K. The officer was caught on a wire trying to set a weekly buy with the intent to distribute, although there is no evidence that he actually made any purchases. Special K is the street name for the pet tranquilizer ketamine, a powerful anesthetic that produces hallucinations and makes crappy house music sound way better. This report is brought to you with the help of InjusticeEverywhere.com. For these and other shocking stories of the boys in blue, visit CopBlock.org. This is Zoe. And this is Nick. Stay tuned for a message from our sponsor and keep it right here on LRN.FM.